Matt, I believe we're going to talk about multi-layer visualization and planning next. And you mentioned at the start of the webinar today that this is actually a new feature. So folks who are maybe familiar or even the current customers have used this product, this is actually something that's just recently been introduced. Is that correct? That's correct, Chris. In fact, this is something where our customers are very excited about. Many of them have been using our Layer 3 products for years, and now they've always been asking, can you give us insight into the transport? You know, many times there are two different teams within an organization that don't really communicate that well. You know, they're kind of in two different silos. What we're doing here is actually being able to pull the transport information in to the IP views and then provide them both a top down where I'm coming from IP down into the optical understanding and from the optical up into the IP. So maybe I want to do maintenance on a transport link and understand what IP services would be impacted and who do I need to notify. We can now provide that kind of information as well. What I have here is kind of an example workflow where an IP engineer, this would be from top down, IP into transport, is trying to build a set of resilient paths between his West Coast and East Coast offices, his data center, his secure data centers here. And he's highlighted the path. And right now, the IGP, the routing protocols, are saying there are three equal paths between this San Francisco P101 router and this RTP P122 router. Now, if we zoom in, because we're wanting to understand how to build a primary and secondary tunnel to assure diversity, we, the network will take care of it, but we, we can't have the paths on that same physical infrastructure. So here, what I've done is I've drilled in. I'm going to click Show My Transport Paths to link with the optical. So you'll see here where these little pluses, these expand boxes, have appeared related to the links that have optical transport underneath them. I'm going to expand this lower link, and we can see here's the three nodes and two links that are going between the West Coast and the East Coast. I click here on the top one. You can see this path is a little bit different. It's got four nodes and three links, but they're completely physically diverse. And then I'm going to open this middle one, and we can see that, in fact, it is sharing those same two middle links and that same optical transport fiber across the country. So if we were engineering both the top and the middle here, if we had a failure in that single link there, it would bring down all of my communication between those two sites. In this case, we could just make sure that we're picking one of these other two as our primary and secondary, and we can guarantee that we got full physical diversity as well as IP logical diversity. So Matt, this is pretty interesting. One thing I think that immediately comes to mind is that's a lot of information of correlating different layers, right? The optical layer and the IP, the layer three uh, layer. Are you having to go in and manually populate all these tables and relationships, right? I think a lot of times customers say, how are you getting this data? How are you making this view? Or is this discovered data? Yeah, this is actually discovered data coming from, in this case, the Siena MCP NMS, the MCP can dom domain controller. But it, it, just like it would be of the Truro controller for Fujitsu or an ADVA device for ADVA, we have the ability to then collect that information, discover that information through our Blue Planet discovery process. That's brought into the model and then matched up with all of the IP links. In fact, if we look here, kind of give you an idea of, of some of the transport information, I can click here on this particular transport node here that I've highlighted, and it will actually show me all the services that have come up through that data sync. Uh, and so here we can see here are all the services. I can actually get visualizations of the different optical services that particular node has, and then any of the IP links that are linked to it. So if I was working from a transport perspective, I know, hey, guys, here's my optical node. I want to know I need to do some maintenance on a particular link or a particular line card. I need to understand what's going through that. We can come here, see the inventory, and then I can also see the related IP links, be able to click on those. And then as I do, that's where it will tell me you know, what customers, what services are running across that link. Who do I need to notify as I'm doing maintenance on that particular circuit? Wow. So this is actually multi-layer discovery and visualization. And, you know, it's interesting you can talk about looking at the optical and seeing what will be affected on the router layer. Many times we see that the customers have different operational groups. The folks who maintain the optical network are different from the folks who maintain the router network. So oftentimes when there's a critical outage or there's something that's not understood well, you can even get into finger pointing or blaming or, or what's going on. So it seems like this would eliminate some of that where you can very clearly say, okay, the optical network has these services that are dependent upon it or this route is going across that link. That's exactly right, Chris. You know, what it really does is it can, at a glance, tell me if I have an IP problem, 
Do I have an optical problem? Has the optical link wrapped? The other thing, because we're collecting this information millisecond by millisecond, let's say one of these paths changes. If the ring reverses from an optical transport, all it changes from an IP perspective is maybe the latency, right? It's not a congestion event, but the latency is now shot up because it's taking a longer path. We actually reflect that because we're recording both of those layers together and then storing that so that we can use that for playback, analysis, and modeling.